Hey, how are you doing guys? Lewis here with Fedivo, and today we're going to have a look at the 101 on using Blur inside of DaVinci Resolve. This is going to be a very beginner-friendly tutorial, so if you're not only new to DaVinci Resolve, but editing in general, then you're going to walk away with a lot of information, such as how to apply the blur effect, the different types of blurs available, and some of the best practices depending on what type of video footage you're working with. Now you may think, is a blur not just a blur? But think of this, there is a stern difference between the type of blur from putting on your glasses and taking your glasses off versus the type of blur that you would see in a passing car looking out into the distance horizon and seeing the landscape pass by with some motion blur. So take that into consideration and without further ado, let's just jump into Resolve. But before doing so, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel. Okay, so in DaVinci Resolve, a blur effect can be applied in four different pages. It can be applied on the cut page by going to the effects panel, on the edit page by finding it in the effects panel, on the fusion page, again, effects panel, just type in blur or up here, and on the color page, again, on resolve effects blur within the effects panel. However, as to what page you intend to add the effects will wholly depend on what you are doing. If you are editing and just want to apply a quick blur transition, then you would be doing it within the edit page or the cut page. However, if it was part of some 3D composition, obviously the blur would be applied in the fusion page. And if you apply a blur in the edit page, it follows through into the color page too. So just be wary of that when you are editing um, in case you get tripped up and you're trying to find where exactly that effect is. So I've just added box blur. Let's start with box blur. The box blur effect imparts blurs in a rectangular pattern, causing each pixel to blur with its neighbors, resulting in this smooth Gaussian-like blur. Now, when I was growing up playing about on Photoshop, one thing that I was always slightly confused about was the difference between box blur and Gaussian blur. So I'm just gonna add box blur to the bottom Gaussian blur to the top. Now, when I play them, let me just destroy that clip. That's Gaussian blur. That's box blur. It's kind of like, well, you know, what is the difference? What is the, the benefits of using either or? Well, you can really see the difference when I overlay one clip, which has the Gaussian blur on it, and I'm going to disable it. See the difference? We zoom in we can really see why the box blur has its name of it being a box blur because these blurs are broken up into the rectangular box patterns now where would this come in use because for a lot of circumstances i imagine the gaussian blur might be the go-to well one use i have found for it is when we're working with text and place it by here we're going to call it city Football, okay, click play. And we've just got a note back from the producer that says, look, uh, this is a little bit too intrusive. We're losing some of the clarity of the text. Can you do anything? Now, before you start thinking about changing the font or perhaps adding um, a black solid underneath and lowering the opacity, whatever it may be, I would suggest looking at using the box blur because it's a lot more aesthetically pleasing in these situations than the Gaussian blur. So we're gonna to go to the color page, select the football clip itself, and I'm gonna get my power window, take a square, I'm just gonna truncate the size a tiny bit, take it down over the text, and increase the softness, then add a box blur. I'm just gonna lower the strength a little bit. But now what we've got is this text is far more viewable within that area and the box blur itself doesn't really destroy the quality of the of, of the, the background. It's just adding a little bit more density to that area so we can correctly see the text and we're still getting the action behind. It's not as if it's suddenly dropped into an incredibly blurry amount, which I think is what we see with the Gaussian blur. And yeah, this is, uh, this is great for that use. Another thing I like to use the box blur for is when we want to draw focus to a specific area of the image, 
but again, the Gaussian blue is just a little bit too overpowering. So say for example, um, the producer really likes this shot, but he wants the tomatoes more in focus. So again, just another power window. And just for context, I'm gonna apply the Gaussian blur. I need to invert this. Uh, that's a little bit too strong. Lower it down. But there's something that doesn't look quite right about that to me. It seems too um, artificial. So if I take off the Gaussian blur, instead add the box blur, then lower this strength, that feels a lot better. In fact, maybe if I use the softness, that feels as if you know we might have been using a touch shift lens or something on this shot, rather than adding an effect in post-production. Okay, back to the timeline. Next on our assignment, we have directional blur. The directional blur effect involves a single angle defined blur that runs along a selected orientation, often used to simulate rapid movement. It effectively offers the viewer the illusion of high speed action. So in this example with the skier, it might not be using it to its best advantage. We can see some form of employed motion blur or directional blur, but again, it, you know, it doesn't really seem that realistic, even if we change the uh, direction to correlate to the direction of the skier. Not working. Let's delete that. Okay, so we've got this clip of a young girl asleep in the can. By the way, guys, all of this video footage used throughout this tutorial is available from the Fediva library if you need clips similar. Okay, so the producer's got back in touch with me. He has another request. This guy is non-stop. And it's that um, we actually need to see the mountains in the background. The camera operator didn't know that. And instead, uh, we're just seeing the sky. So this is exactly the type of footage that we need in the background. So what I've got here is a five minute composition job. Removing the windows. Guys, do not judge me on the composition. It is a uh, removal of the windows. It is a blur tutorial. And now here, this looks better. Okay, it looks like what we need. However, um, there is one thing to note. First of all, I can tell by the implied motion in the car that we're traveling a lot faster than what we can see out of the window. So a simple fix for this is just to simply increase the speed of this to say 200. Let's play that back. Let's bring this into fit. Okay, so that's much better. It definitely feels like we're traveling at the same speed, but there is still something that needs looking at. And that is, I disable this clip, bring this down. Because the car that this was filmed from was either going slow or it was filmed in slow motion, the clarity of the landscape is still relatively clear, even when it's been sped up 200%. Whereas for example, if we look at this, as we're flying past, you know, even the trees in the background, it's not that clear. There's, there's an element of implied motion blur to it, but perhaps not that much. Definitely with the trees in the foreground uh, and even the trees in the midground. But yeah, we're not getting that here. Everything's too crisp for what should be a faster clip. So all we're gonna do is let me bring that back up. Now go to directional blur, add that on. Now, first of all, we need to change the blur angle to say, I think zero is sideways. Yeah, so now we've got that. And then reduce the blur strength. I'm gonna say just right about, just so it's implied. We don't want it to be overbearing. Just turn it on and off. So we can see there's just that slight loss of clarity here from the speed of the vehicle. Okay, that's all we're looking for. Let's go back out. Yeah, that looks a lot more realistic outside of my dodgy composition work. So that is the directional blur, helpful to evoke fast motion. Next, we have the mosaic blur. Also known as pixelation or pixel blur is an image processing technique that involves reducing the level of detail in an image by replacing blocks or regions of pixels with larger simplified pixel blocks. This creates a mosaic-like effect where the image appears to be composed of large squares or rectangular pixels, perfect for replicating 8-bit footage. Now, one thing I do find with the mosaic blur is you can't just drag it onto any old footage 
and expect to get 8-bit looking video files. I do find that it tends to work a lot better when you're using a nighttime video clip and a nighttime video clip that has bright lights like this Ferris wheel shot. If you're looking to generate some 8-bit sort of content, definitely gravitate towards nighttime shooting. But one use of the mosaic blur that I think is really beneficial is protecting someone's identity. So I'm going to go over to the color tab. I'm going to create a power window. Bring that over to this man's face. Track forward. That was not the best power window I've seen. That's okay. Uh, then we're going to add the mosaic blur to here. If I just soften around the edges. Now this, I feel like is the best use of the mosaic blur, protecting something that shouldn't be seen on screen, whether it's a piece of um, uh, an image that you don't have the license to show or someone's identity. Now you might think, well, you know, why don't we just use the Gaussian blur? Just remove these clips, take off the mosaic blur, add the Gaussian blur. I feel like with this, you know, there's always that element where you just squint. If you just squint now, you can kind of still make out this this uh, this guy's features. Likewise, if we increase the strength, it just starts to look a little bit silly. And again, we can sort of make out his features. The mosaic blur really mitigates that. And secondly, because the mosaic blur is typically used on those sort of clips, there's a little bit of a, of a genre convention with it. And what I mean by that, it's something that we're used to on crime shows or you know perhaps interviews where we can't see the person's face they tend to use a mosaic blur so it reinforces what has already been seen before gaussian blur as one of the most popular blur effects gaussian blur is a go-to for smoothing rough edges or harsh pixels its effect is akin to looking through a semi-opaque glass as it diminishes detail and reduces noise so the gaussian blur is usually the go-to blur when you want to just add a blur effect to a video to knock out the focus, perhaps to lay, overlay some text to make the text stand out a little bit more. But there's a lot more to it than just using it, you know, for blur dissolves and so forth. So for example, we've got this, uh, this business meeting video clip here, which is gonna be used for the new company promo. However, HR has flagged it that that chart right there should not be in focus. I mean, it's out of focus as it is, but the graphics are still identifiable. So, we're gonna use the Gaussian blur to fix this. So I'm gonna go into the color page. Let's make sure we go to a frame where it's quite viewable. I'm gonna grab the pen tool, just mask around this fella, come up here. Nice, and then I'm just gonna soften it slightly. Go to the tracking, let's track this. And even though it drops out of view, because resolve is amazing, it still continues to track it. Then, Let's maybe bring that in. Then we're gonna add the Gaussian blur. And perfect, look at that. I may even be inclined to maybe bring that in just so it's not as effective on the gentleman. Do you know what, we could probably even, let's go to the power window and bring that softening down. There you go. We could increase the Gaussian blur all the way so it is hardly viewable at all. I'm sure HR will be very happy with the results here because no data is on display. And this video is now good to go for the company promo. So that's just one use of a Gaussian blur is just to like indiscreet, uh, to discreetly knock something out of focus and not call attention to it. And a lot of the time, nobody's gonna notice. Uh, whereas, you know, if we go to the mosaic blur and do what we did with the other footage, there you go. You know, that is very noticeable. They're like, oh, well, what's that in the background? Kind of takes the audience's attention away from the lady and over to the pixelated graph on the, uh, the whiteboard. So that's one use of the Gaussian blur. Another one, which is what I would like to use in my compositing motion graphics quite a fair bit, is let's say that we're going to make a title here for a TV show and it's called um, Music Through the Decades. Okay, and then we're gonna go to the 1980s. It's a TV show that you know documents the 
different types of music. We're currently on the 1980s episode. Click play, got the audio waveform in the background and it's just way too overbearing. Uh, you know, you can hardly make out what it is. Now we could lower the opacity of this clip but you know, it, we kind of, while the text is viewable, we're not getting the same effect now. It's sort of too dampened. We do want the brightness of this clip at the same time, we also want to see the text. Well, let's just go back up to the OpenFX, grab the Gaussian blur, drag it to this clip, maybe bump it up a slight bit. Where are we at with the opacity? Let's maybe take it down to 80. There we go. So we've got the brightness of the motion background in the background, but we can also see the text plain and clear. So that's another great use for using the Gaussian blur outside of blur dissolves and adding a blur to the overall video clip. Okay, back to the edit page. Now we're gonna look at the radial blur. With radial blur, the blur originates from a selected central point extended outward in concentric circles that grow softer with increasing distance from the center. This effect simulates a 360 degree spinning motion and can give the illusion that the environment is spinning around a stationary subject. Now, quite like the mosaic blur, I find that the radial blur also has a best use practice. And often you're gonna get some really cool effects when you're using it, when the image has a spherical or round object at its center. So here we have a Ferris wheel. I'm gonna apply the radial blur. I'm just gonna move the position so we can see that it's coming from that A rather than elsewhere. And here now we've got this very sort of surreal looking aspect to there you go, the footage. You know, maybe for example, um, your character has a little bit of a, a phobia about going on Ferris wheel. So what we can maybe do is go to the effects, go to the strength, set a keyframe and just go in and slowly just increase. And the guy's looking up, he's like, oh, I really don't want to go onto this Ferris wheel. And they're like, oh, that's fine, it's okay, you'll be okay. And he's like, nope, I really don't want to go on this Ferris wheel. That's a really cool effect to use in that regard. And then again, we have this gentleman who is not positioned centrally. And <laughs> uh, I think the idea here is to, oh, hey, look at that, guys. As we can see in this video clip, uh, it looks like that the filmmaker has used a blur on that radio station, so there's no copyright involvement. Again, I'm, I'm being dead serious. This is incredibly spontaneous. I only just noticed that. But this is a great use of using real life blur. Um, just to kind of knock that slightly out of focus, I did not notice it at all. But that's really interesting, really cool. Anyway, um, this gentleman looks like he's had a, had, a, had a hard time. Maybe he's just found out his wife was cheating on him, or he's lost his job, whatever it may be. I'm gonna go with the, uh, the concept that he's actually a little bit ill and he's pulled over because he's not feeling too great. So I'm gonna apply the radial blur on here. Again, move the position so it's on his head. Maybe move down this a little bit. And now we've got this sort of anamorphic sort of look to uh, and the radial blur to it, uh, where he's just not feeling great. This guy needs to get home. And I would even be more implied to add a little bit of a camera shake to this. So we'll do a camera shake. Just gonna go motion scale. Um, Classic resolve camera shake. There we go, that looks cool. That guy is like, I need to get home. In fact, I would probably even spend some more time adding something like a uh, chromatic aberration removal, and instead I will add to it. Nope, I don't wanna do that. Okay. Yeah, that's great, that's really cool. Okay, and next we have the zoom blur. The zoom blur or zoom burst creates a dynamic visual effect wherein the image appears to be radiating from a central point. 
So that producer guys, he's got back to me again. He's looking for another fix in this, uh, this, this film. And it's that he wants this jet chasing the other jet to be um, a little bit faster. So what we're gonna do is again, go to uh, return controls, add speed point. So here we've got 100 and then here I'm gonna change it into 200. Let's have a look. So we've got boom, boom, boom. No, we need, we need more implied speed, 400. Great, okay. So he's just put on the throttle at that point. So look. Nice. So then what we're gonna have here is the zoom blur. Just reset this keyframe. And I'm going to zoom them out to zero. Set a keyframe. Right here I'm gonna bump it up just to imply it a little bit. And then there's a few frames further, jump into that warp speed. So now we've got something like this. Lens Blur. Lens Blur is a studio vision only blur and it offers comprehensive control over various bokeh effects using the adjustable parameters. So whether you desire soft, creamy bokeh as if you were changing the focus of an image or perhaps a whimsical hat shaped bokeh, Lens Blur can help achieve that. Okay, so in this example, I've already got a setup because it was quite complex to do so. Is, just reset the no grid here. On this node, I have the depth map. Uh, on this node here, I have a depth map, and this allows Resolve to identify the depth within the scene. And what I've done is I've set the um, uh, the near limit for the woman, the younger girl, and the television and the couch, because the same producer he wants the background to be a little more out of focus. He tells me that you know it's too distracting for the video clip and instead what we need is um, it to be out of focus. A touch more. He wishes that the uh, the DP was shooting at F1, F28. Okay, so go to lens blur here. Now I've added that. And now what we have is a somewhat convincing, maybe if I just change that blur down ever so slightly, bit of depth of field, added depth of field to the shot. Now you're never ever gonna replicate it, but it's a lot better or perhaps a lot closer to what the producer wants. All right guys, I've been Lewis with Fidevo. I now hope that you know the difference between a mosaic blur versus a directional blur. And if not, then we watch the video. So I'll catch you guys next time. Remember to like and subscribe and see you soon.